Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate this mystery of Jesus' love for us sinners, let us first acknowledge our own sins and failures, and acknowledge our loving and gracious God who rejoices this day to offer us, his people, pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins and failures. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us and nourish us with your sacred body and precious blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God and Father, grant that we, your people, may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession and believing may possess life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, the risen Lord, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord and God, the one who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Sisters and brothers, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones. You are members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify God, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is God's kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the other apostles when Jesus came that first Easter. So the other disciples said to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Thomas, however, said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks 
and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again inside in the room and Thomas was with them. Jesus came among them, although the doors were locked. And he stood in their midst and he said, peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas responded and he said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. thinking about this uh, apostle because today is my brother Tom's feast day. I'll, I'll text him later to remind him. Today's his feast day, which he'll take advantage not of me but of his wife. They're retired, so she's stuck with him today. But anyway, as I was thinking about uh, my brother, and this is a name in my mother's family. My great-grandfather was named Thomas. Um, and, and, and Thomas has this bad rap, the guy who didn't believe. I, don't believe, I will not believe. Um, I often wonder in my own life, this, this is my question myself, I'm just throwing it out to you. This is what I ask myself. I don't know whether this question would apply to you. For some reason, I think it does. How often have we abandoned Jesus? Can we count the ways and the times, or do we want to? And if we attempt to count the ways and the times, I have a feeling that we all would plead guilty. Don't you? I think so. I think so. For myself, certainly. So we have this apostle, a twin, like our pastor, and our associate pastor, twins. I'll remind them of that this morning when I see them. Thomas deserted Jesus at Calvary. The only one that was there was John and Mary, the two disciples, and Mary Magdalene. And then Thomas denied the risen Jesus when he got the testimony of Mary Magdalene, maybe because she was a woman, he didn't believe her, but she told him. And the community of believers said in the gospel, we've seen the Lord. I will not believe. I don't believe it. So when Jesus comes to his followers, when he comes into their midst, it says, his first words were peace. Don't get nervous. Don't get guilty. Don't start trying to figure out what you're going to say. It's okay. Peace. And he approaches Thomas, no anger, no reproach, no vengeance, no getting even, no pointing fingers. And Jesus' words, his attitude, and his actions do what? What do they do when you look at that text? They lead Thomas to faith. Whatever he wanted to say, whatever he was thinking about saying when he saw Jesus, thought, oh my God, he's here, and it's really true. What am I going to say to him now? Jesus comes in with his words, his attitude, and his actions, leads Thomas to faith. That's all God wants. That's all he wants us to do. He's not here to judge us and, and, to, and to put us into some kind of a situation where we're, we're completely and utterly lost. That's not what he's here for. What does Peter, what does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. And I was taught as a little kid, I don't know whether you were, the sisters taught us when the priest held the host up, right? We were told to say, my Lord and my God. 
an act of faith. So, you know, it seems to me that um, sometimes um, our, what would you call them? In this case, Thomas's stubbornness really worked to benefit him, didn't it? He held his ground, and Jesus used that situation to have Thomas proclaim the faith. And thousands of years later, little kids in a school in Nutley, every time we went to Mass and the priest held the host up, even though in the early days they had their back to us, we had enough faith from the sisters to say what he said, my Lord and my God. What an act of faith. And he did it because he was so stubborn. But Jesus beat him. And he can beat us too. So maybe, maybe if you haven't been saying that, might be something to think about when that host is raised, my Lord and my God. Let us pray. My sisters and brothers, temples of the, of the Holy Spirit, dwelling places of the living God, we pray that all the baptized may be gathered together into one household of faith, the church, we pray. That the people of God may continue the work of the apostles, we pray. That those who are studying for the faith may be a fit dwelling place for the Spirit of God, we pray. That all people may come to accept one another as sisters and brothers in Christ, we pray. That the sick may know the healing touch of the risen one as Thomas did, we pray. That we may live as citizens of the age to come, we pray. That those who have died may behold the one who is both Lord and God, we pray. And today we remember at this Mass, Patty Sumasa, and I'd ask in your charity to please remember my godfather, John R. Handley, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now pause to offer the Lord our own personal prayers within the silence of our hearts. We pray. God of life, the wounds of the risen one brought Thomas to faith. And with him, we are members of your household, the church. Strengthen us in the faith that makes us one, that we, the church, may grow in unity, a holy and living temple of persons, built on the cornerstone, which is Jesus himself. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our loving and gracious Father. Lord, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Gracious God, <clears throat> we render you the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving through our union with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the one who lives forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our union with Jesus Christ the Lord. For you have built us, your church, to stand firm on apostolic foundations so that we become a lasting sign of your holiness here on earth and offer all humanity your teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, we, your people, sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious and loving God, you are holy. You are the source, you are the fonts of all holiness. Make holy these gifts of ours by sending your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion and death, Jesus took our bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing and then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you When the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more he gave you thanks and praise. And he gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so as we, your holy people, together celebrate this Eucharistic memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread of life, this chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity and peace in union with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in death in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your compassionate and loving mercy. Welcome them all into the lights of your holy face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the prophets, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we, your people, may merit to be co-heirs with them to your gift of eternal life, and so praise and glorify you through our union with Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. For it is through Christ, with him and in him, most loving and gracious God in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us succumb to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace to us in our days, that by the help of your compassionate and loving mercy, 
We, your people, may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope, the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles and disciples, and now say to all of us this morning, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather look upon the faith of your people, your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Thank you, dear. May this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those like ourselves who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God and Father, as we, your people, have truly celebrated and received in this sacrament the sacred body and precious blood of your risen Son, grant that we may recognize him along with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and so proclaim Jesus by our deeds and by our way of life. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and in the love of Christ. Thank you for sharing Mass today. Have a nice day. Have a great day, Father. I certainly will.